friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today is an exciting day. We are gonna be taking care of a bunch of eggs. We're gonna be preserving eggs. Eggs are a seasonal thing, just like fruits and vegetables. Chickens have a life cycle of when they lay a lot of eggs and when they take a break. Chickens lay eggs depending on the light hours there are in the day. If there's longer light hours in spring and summer, they lay eggs in the fall and winter. They stop laying. Sometimes last year I had a few chickens that laid all winter. I don't know if it was one or two. I have 11 chickens and so we would get a couple eggs every day, but they're getting older and so they probably aren't gonna be laying as many eggs in the fall and winter. I have 11 chickens for just my husband and I. That is way too many chickens for two people. We get about nine to 10 eggs on average a day right now. So the majority, probably 80 to 90% of the eggs that I get, I give away. I either barter with people, here's some eggs for something, or I just like to bless my friends and family with fresh eggs, which I love doing. But I wanna have eggs this fall and winter, and I don't think they're gonna be laying as many eggs this winter. So I'm gonna be preserving them. We are actually gonna be freeze drying eggs, and I've used my freeze dryer twice. And the first time what I did is I freeze dried just bread. You're supposed to freeze dry just bread to get the machine going. And this time I wanna do eggs. I've had a lot of you on Instagram tell me that it's one of your favorite things to freeze dry, and you've given me a lot of encouragement. And I'm really excited about this. I think it'll be great to have shelf stable eggs on my pantry shelf all winter long. I don't have enough eggs to fill the entire freeze dryer. So I am have some peppers here. The second batch of stuff I freeze dried were some peppers and berries. And the peppers, I'm super happy with how those turned out. And I have some peppers here that are looking a little worse for the wear. So it's time to get those preserved up. So we'll run those at the same time we run the eggs. There's four trays in my freeze dryer and you can put 18 eggs on one shelf. So I am gonna crack 18 eggs in this bowl. When these eggs are done freeze drying, we are gonna reconstitute them, and we are gonna cook them up, and we're gonna do a taste test together, which is scrambled eggs, to see how the texture is and how we like them. This here is my freeze dryer, and this thing is pretty easy to use. What we wanna do is we wanna get it turned on and we wanna get it going because it does need to cool down. It takes about 30 minutes for that process to start before we put anything into it. The first thing we wanna do before we turn on our freeze dryer is actually close this valve here. There's a valve right here. Freeze dryers work under pressure and if that valve is open, the machine won't be able to get under pressure. So we make sure that's closed. Once that's closed, we just follow the directions on the pad here. I think it does remind us to close that, but let's just get started. So you push the start button now it says cooling vacuum chamber and that's going to take 15 minutes while that's going let's keep going on the eggs the freeze dryer is quite large and it weighs about 225 pounds so what i did is i purchased this stainless steel table that's on wheels and casters so i can actually move this freeze dryer in and out of my food storage room that's my walk-in pantry back there and i am storing this actually in there long term by having it on this table i can wheel it in and out of my food storage room by myself no problem and I also am storing my two food dehydrators on the bottom shelf there. All right, it has now been 15 minutes and it says load food into freeze dryer, close drain valve, which we already did. Do not mix frozen food and fresh food. So you can freeze dry from frozen or fresh. I'm choosing today to freeze dry fresh food. Because I'm loading a liquid, the easiest way to do it is to actually put the tray in the freeze dryer first and then pour your liquid eggs into it so you're not trying to you know, carry wobbly eggs. Now I'm gonna go mix up a few more eggs so we can get the next shelf filled. Now that we have the eggs done, Let's get the peppers ready. All I'm gonna do is dice them in whatever size you want the finished product in. You can do this process from either fresh produce, fresh eggs, fresh meat, or you can do it from frozen. I'm choosing today to do it from fresh, but last time I did the peppers, I did them from frozen peppers just as a test, and I was super happy with the outcome. When you're preserving food for it to be shelf stable, you want to get rid of the moisture. And the difference between freeze drying and food dehydrating is food dehydrating uses a heat process to evaporate moisture, and freeze drying uses negative temperatures to vaporize the moisture in the food. Dehydrating takes about 80 
to 90% of the moisture out of food. Freeze drying takes about 98% of the moisture out of food. Now that we have our freeze dryer loaded and closed, all we're gonna do now is click continue. Now the screen says freezing. It's gonna freeze the fruit before it starts freeze drying the food. That is why you can work from frozen or fresh, and if you actually start with frozen, it does speed up the process, but I don't feel like freezing these and then getting them in here. We're just gonna do it all in here right now. It's probably gonna take about 18 to 24 hours for this to freeze dry, so obviously in the morning we'll come back and we'll check it together. This is a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I will leave this link down in the description box if you wanna check this out. This is a medium size. They do come smaller and they do come larger. I'm really excited to have this. The possibilities are pretty endless when it comes to freeze drying. You can freeze dry any food. You can freeze dry whole meals. You can freeze dry almost anything. All you have to do is add water to reconstitute it. And when you reconstitute the food, it's supposed to keep the texture and the nutrient value a lot better than dehydrating. I don't think this is gonna replace my dehydrator. There's a lot of things that I love dehydrated. I'm excited to have this as an addition in my food preservation, along with my canning, food dehydrating, and things like that. So we're gonna let this sit, and if you wanna check it out, the link will be down in the description box below. Since I'm already puttering around in the kitchen, I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner going. I've got a freezer meal that I took out of the freezer, and I just harvested some potatoes out of the garden. So if you don't wanna watch me cook dinner, go ahead and skip to where I end up taking this stuff out of the freeze dryer. This is some ranch pesto chicken that I made in the last freezer cooking video. I can link this recipe down in the description box if you want. I'm gonna cook it just in the oven. I believe everything is dry in here now, so we're gonna move on to the next step here. I'm going to turn it off. I'm gonna depressurize it so that I can open this door, because right now if I try to open this, it's pressurized. So I just turn this little valve here, and now it's depressurized, and it'll allow me to open it. Oops, I just dropped one. They are completely dry, nice and crispy, so let me empty this whole thing. Oh yeah, those are dry. No moisture in that at all. This is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here in just a second. One more tray of peppers. Nice and crispy. I'm not gonna use this again today. So I'm gonna go through the defrost process. There is a layer of ice that is around the inside here and that ice comes from drawing out the moisture from the food and it creates ice along the outside. So we need to defrost the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the defrost setting. It's gonna tell me to keep the drain valve open, which it is already open. And now we are gonna close this because it says to keep door closed when it's draining. We're gonna hit the continue button. And now it's gonna defrost. Water is gonna drain out of the machine. So I have a pot here that has the hose into it so it'll collect the water that it's gonna drain from. So now we need to decide how we're gonna store our freeze dried goods. Are we planning to have this be extremely long-term storage, 20 to 30 years, or am I just planning to try to get this to last through the winter and stay nice and fresh so that I can enjoy these peppers all winter long? My goal with these, because I'm still new to freeze drying, is to get these peppers and my eggs to store all winter long so that I'll have fresh peppers and eggs all winter long when my chickens decide to stop laying. So I am choosing to store them in jars. As soon as they come out of the freeze dryer, you need to package up your goods so that they don't start reabsorbing moisture from the air. And these were actually the first freeze dried anything I made. And they actually taste really good. This is 
is actually a snack that I could see myself eating kind of regularly, just opening it up and eating it. And all I'm gonna do to store it in a jar is take my jar and fill it up. You wanna fill it up as full as possible. And then put a lid on it as tight as possible. And this is gonna go in my pantry and I'm gonna fill one more jar up. If you're wanting to store your freeze dried goods for long term storage, like 20, 30 years, that's when you need to store them in a mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. I have not done that yet, so this is the way I'm gonna do it for now because my goal really is just to keep these goods fresh for all winter so that I can use them all winter. Let's move on to the eggs and then we're gonna cook some up and we're gonna taste test and we are gonna see if we like freeze dried eggs. <laughs> I'm really curious to know how these cook up. And here is over three dozen eggs that are completely freeze dried. We got two and a half jars completely filled with freeze dried egg powder. And now it's kind of the exciting slash nerve wracking part. I'm gonna cook these up and we are gonna try them. I just put on the stove in my cast iron just a little bit of butter and we are gonna cook these up and taste them. I'm gonna taste them and I'm gonna have my husband taste them. And I'm honestly a little bit nervous. I've never tried cooking with freeze dried eggs before, never tasted freeze dried eggs before. So we're gonna find out together if the texture's good and if we even like the flavor of them. So to reconstitute your eggs, for every one egg, it is two tablespoons of powder to two tablespoons of water. And this should give us one egg. That is a beautiful yellow color. That's because my chickens are free range. We're gonna mix this up until everything's dissolved. The consistency is coming back of what you would expect with a scrambled egg. It smells normal. Freeze drying does not cook food. It literally keeps the food in whatever state you put it in there. So if you put in raw eggs and you freeze dry them, you have raw eggs you need to cook them. They are cooking up it looks like. <laughs> I'm honestly a little bit nervous. I was trying to decide whether I was gonna add seasonings and I think I'm gonna skip it because I kind of want to just see exactly how they taste by themselves. All right, I think they're done. They look really good. Got a little bowl here for me and I've got a bowl for my husband. They cooked up really nice. I really like the texture of what I'm seeing here. Pretty excited about that. Let me call my husband down and let's give this a try. So my husband just got down here and I, I want him to try this. I want you to give an honest answer, okay? Okay. So honesty, so we're both gonna try it. Like I said, I really like the texture. What do you think of the texture when you look at it, Josh? I shouldn't have said that actually. I should have let you look at it. and. <laughs> The texture is good. It seems like just normal eggs. Very well scrambled, like if you scrambled it 100%. I'm nervous. Wow. So what do you think? I think it's hard to tell a difference, honestly. Yeah. The, um... I would say the biggest difference is just that it's like 100% scrambled. So you have mm -hmm. the egg white and the egg yolk almost... 100% combined. Normally when you would scramble it, it would be... A know, little bit. There would be a little differentiation. And that probably has to do with the fact that I mix it up in the Vitamix because there is 100% mixture of the egg white and the egg yolk in here. There's no separation whatsoever. I bet you could just crush it with your hands because it's so dry when you take it out or crush it with something instead of doing the Vitamix. So it's not like completely um, mixed if that's something you wanted. But it tastes exactly like a scrambled egg and the texture is like a scrambled egg i don't i don't tell a difference in texture yeah if you hadn't told me and you made this up like you normally would i probably wouldn't have noticed that's what i or i shouldn't say i probably i wouldn't have noticed that's what i should have done i should have just done a blind taste test with him but he's been kind of helping me with the process so it would be kind of obvious if i fed him an egg and asked him what he thought of it because we do eat eggs so it would be a little suspicious are you gonna go Joey to stay around or? Nope, you can go. You guys have met him at this point. He was in one live and that's probably the only time you'll ever see him is he promised that he would show up one time and if you wanna watch that Q and A, he is in it. The possibility with this freeze dryer, I think is endless. Now I'm starting to think of all these ideas of things I wanna freeze dry. Honestly, that thing was super intimidating to me when I first got it. And my husband walked me through 
the entire thing. We've done it two, this was only my second time and this was the first time that I kind of did it by myself. And now that I'm getting a little bit of confidence with it, I'm excited to explore what the possibilities are. One of the things I'm like super excited about trying is freeze drying chicken broth because I could make my own chicken bouillon powder. How cool would that be? I could actually make my bone broth and freeze dry it and I could have that in my pantry shelf. And if you've ever read the ingredients of some chicken bouillons, there is some interesting, questionable ingredients in there. And this is really exciting. If you guys have your favorite freeze dry recipes, because I know I've talked on Instagram with some of you guys about freeze drying, could you please leave them down in the comment section? Because I think it would be fun if we start sharing recipes and I start hearing from you guys what you like to do so that I can start trying them and showing you because I'm so new to this. I don't want to pretend like I'm an expert. I am no expert when it comes to freeze drying, but I am excited about the possibilities and the things that are going to come because I have this freeze dryer now. The link to the freeze dryer that I bought is down in the description box if you want to check out the one I got. I'm just really grateful I have this. I think it's going to be a great resource for us. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in my kitchen as we freeze dried together for the first time. Well, second time, first time by myself. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you wanna watch more of my videos, some will pop up right here. You can certainly go check those out right now. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.